In today's video, we're checking out the FuelWorld L2 multi-camera switcher and live streaming solution. Let's get into it. Welcome back folks, my name's Shane. Before we get started, a massive thank you to FuelWorld for sending this out for the review. I really appreciate it. And like always, I'm gonna be using this throughout the entirety of the video so you can see exactly how it works and it responds. Just to give you a quick rundown of my setup, I have three Panasonic GH5 cameras going into the first three HDMI inputs. In the fourth one, I have my Super Nintendo Mini. This HDMI output is going out into my Pearl Nano which is what is recording this entire video. Just to let you know, I'm also recording in my Panasonic GH5S. So you'll see a side-by-side -side now between the recorded quality going out of this into the Pearl Nano, which may be at the mercy of the Pearl Nano to some extent, but it's a good representation of streaming quality that you'll get out of this versus the actual camera recording. One of my favorite things about the L2 Plus is this 5.5 inch touchscreen. I've currently got it set up to preview mode, which allows you to see exactly what's going on on all inputs. I'm also recording the multi-view to an external recorder, but just know I'm doing it in a less than optimum way. There wasn't any other way I could work out how to do it without sacrificing either the primary recording or this multi-view recording. So what you see right now might be a little bit laggy or a little bit choppy, but it's the best I could do. It doesn't reflect what I'm actually seeing on screen. Let's talk about using the Fuel World L2 Plus. So this is primarily designed to be used with something like open broadcaster software. It can also be detected as a webcam and it will work with any surface that supports that, including Facebook Live, YouTube, and a number of other streaming services. So if you plan on doing any type of multi-camera setup to the web, this will allow you to do it very easily while keeping the load on the system down, being that you can either output at 720p at up to 50 or 60 frames per second, or full HD. For anyone doing any type of multi-camera work, whether you're recording a band, or if you're a content creator making a video like this where you wanna save all of that editing time with transferring lots of files to the computer, layering them up in Final Cut or Adobe or whatever it is you use, cutting them all, this will save you far more time because at the end of the day, you'll get one big file. One of the advantages of the L2 Plus is if you're in a corporate environment or in a venue, for example, where you either have a band or a speaker delivering something on stage, you can set up a multi-camera environment, send the HDMI out to a much larger screen or projector and share that with the audience. And lastly, if you wanna up your webcam game, this will absolutely work as a dedicated webcam for your favorite mirrorless camera. Let's take a look at all of the inputs and outputs. So if we take a look at the back of the unit, we get four HDMI inputs, a HDMI output, and this is where we connect our power supply. Speaking about the power supply, I didn't actually get an AU plug because I live in Australia. Unfortunately, I had to use a different power supply. Luckily, I've got a few different switches, so another one was completely compatible. But if you live in Australia and you order one of these, just double check you're getting the AU plug. On this side of the unit, we have our Ethernet port and USB 3.0 port. We also get an audio input and an audio output. I'll speak more about the audio a bit later on. A nice advantage to the Ethernet port is that it works in conjunction with the Feel World Live software as you can see on screen down here, it says L2 Plus, and that's detected with the correct IP. These other two are just demo accounts. And if I double click on the L2 Plus, as you can see, we get full control over the unit using this software. The Fuel World Live software makes it far easier to adjust some of the parameters than using the unit itself, but both can be used in exactly the same way. One of the biggest advantages to the software is you can do it a whole lot faster than you'll be able to do going through the menus on the unit itself. If you have any issues detecting the L2 Plus on your home network via the Feel World Live software, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. From the top of the unit, hit the menu button over here. You can either use this wheel control to cycle through each of the parameters on screen or you can touch screen it. So I'm gonna to go to IP settings here and then we're gonna change DHCP to on. This is off by default and I recommend changing this before you do anything else or before you even plug in the ethernet port. That way it will be assigned an IP address from your home router. Let's talk about maybe the best feature of this unit and that's the 5.5 inch touchscreen. So we can either switch by using these buttons on the actual switcher, it's a bit of a no brainer there, or we can tap on screen to do exactly the same thing. Now you might be thinking to yourself, isn't that a little bit redundant being that we've got buttons, why do we need a touchscreen? I'll show you that right now. So if we take a look at the top down here, we can go from multi-view mode to program mode just by holding down on the program mode. Boom, there it is. So now we use the buttons and we get a nice big display of exactly what's going on. If we wanna get out of this, hold down again and it will go back into multi-view mode. That 
little message that comes up on screen is just telling you what mode you're currently in. And then you can go back to using the unit like normal, or of course you can use the touchscreen. When it comes to the input and output frame rates and max resolution, this can support 1080p up to 50 and 60 frames per second, and you can decide between them both depending on if you're in a PAL or an NTSC region. It can also handle multiple frame rates going in. Now the Super Nintendo Mini has a different refresh rate to my cameras and this will scale that 720p 60 frame rate up and back to 1080p at 50 frames per second because that's, I'm in a PAL region, that's what I'll be outputting this particular file at and it does that without any problems. This doesn't support 4K, so if you're looking for a 4K switcher, this isn't the unit for you. The L2 Plus has a lot of built-in transitions and crossfades. I've currently just got it set up so it cuts instantly when I push a button or if I tap on screen. I much prefer this kind of workflow over the fades and dissolves, but I'll show you a few of those right now. You can also use this transition bar to go between one scene to the next. And I've currently got that disabled because I don't personally use it, but I'll show you it as well. So we tap on the SW button over here. The first option is mix we can either tap on screen or we can use this control here and we get a whole lot of different ones these are pretty much the same as what i saw on the prior unit so if we go to fade as i go between like this now you're going to see it's going to cross fade across which is pretty cool let's just go through a few here this is another zoom one this is a push to the right this one's a push down bottom right hand corner that one's kind of cool you could see that being used occasionally maybe this one's the opposite going to the left which is great this one's going up we get the barn door effect there we go so some of these are really cool Again, whether or not you like any of these will be up to <laughs> personal choice. Some of these are a bit much for me, but um, yeah, there you go. So that's all of them. So you like the crossfade, but you want to extend its duration to make it a little bit longer or shorter, depending on your particular needs. I'll show you how to do that right now. So we hit the SW button again, and we go over to mode. We can then change the time. It's currently set to 0.5 seconds. We can set this to a maximum of five, but five is a bit long. So I'm just gonna do 2.5, which is right in the middle there. And now when I change over to the next scene, the crossfade's going to be far slower. Now this is far too slow for me, but you get the point, right? You can set it anywhere you like. I much prefer having this at its fastest time, which is 0.5 seconds. If I'm gonna be using crossfade effects like this, the slower, the faster, the better, the slower, the more annoying for the viewership. So yeah, like this, it works really well. Now, if we go back up to mode here, we can change this to T-bar, which means we can now use the T-bar effect over here, but we have to line this up, right? So let's get out of this. So this means now that we can use this in a number of different ways. We are currently on three and I wanna to transition to two. So the red light is what's actually going out to the audience. If we hit two, it's not going to swap until I use the transition bar, but two is now lined up over here. So as I bring this down, at my own speed, it will transition. So if I go fast, it will go back a lot quicker than at this kind of speed, right? And it does it really smoothly as well. Interestingly enough, even if I'm not that smooth with the T-bar, it still looks smooth going out to the audience. So I like what they've done. Or you can get a crossfade like this. So if you're doing a music video, for example, that might come in really handy. But yeah, I much prefer just having fast cuts or at least fast crossfades. But there's plenty in here to keep hopefully most people happy. The L2 Plus supports picture in picture. And you can also change which one you want to modify, whether that's the small image on screen or the large one behind it. And I'll show you how to do all of that right now. The easiest way to do this is to start on the image that you want to be the primary view. So being that I'm doing a tutorial on this, I wanna just show you how this all works. And then I'll bring up a secondary screen on screen that's a little bit smaller. So if we hit the SW button over here, go to the PIP option, picture in picture. And then we can select any number of these picture in picture options. So I'm gonna put the primary camera back on screen on the top left. You can also move this to the top right move it to the bottom left and bottom right. 
You can also have it dead center, which is right in the way. So I don't want to do that right now. I'll have it over here on the top left. Being that we get a full touch screen, it's really easy to adjust either layer A or layer B. And I'll show you that right now. Taking a look at the top down view here, the easiest way to do this is to simply tap on the top left over here. It will go layer selected B or layer selected A. A will allow us to change the bigger image on screen at the touch of a button like this, nice and simple, right? Then if we go to B, we can change what you see in the top left hand side picture in picture. So this opens up a very different user experience. Simply tap on the screen again. You can change this to whatever you like. And then if I tap on it again, I can put me back on screen. There's also a couple of other picture in picture modes that just don't look quite right. And this is one of my biggest criticisms of the prior unit. It's not a deal breaker by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just something to be aware of. So if we tap the SW button again, we go back into picture in picture. There's all of these split screen modes that all look like they need to be de-squeezed. And I had some success doing that in post, but if you're gonna be doing live streaming, this is unusable, right? So maybe this is for some sort of anamorphic style video. I'm not 100% certain, but uh, you get all of these different split screen effects. The L2 Plus also supports pan tilt zoom cameras or PTZ cameras. So if we take a look at the menu here, we can go to SW and then pan tilt zoom is one of the options here. We can then assign the IP address. We can then enable it on or off and we can also change its orientation in the room. We can also change the zoom and focus. I don't own a pan tilt zoom camera, but I have tested one that was out on loan a little while back with other switching solutions that are very similar to this and I could operate them without any problems at all. And this looks identical. The Fuel World L2 Plus also offers logo support. If this is your first time adding a logo, you need to do this via the computer and I'll show you how to do that right now. If we take a look on screen, we go over to SW, Effects, Logo Overlay. Now I've already added one of these right here. To get the logo to successfully upload, you need it to be a 24-bit BMP file without being larger than 256 pixels by 128 pixels, or it can be square if you're gonna be doing say 128 by 128. That's the maximum resolution. So with that in mind, it doesn't support PNG files, which is a little bit of a downer. But if we go back to the screen here, once you select the picture that you want, click open, and then you click on logo generated. Once you do this, it will then upload that particular file to the switcher and it will see picture update on screen here. Once it hits 100%, you're good to go. You don't need to reset the device or do anything. It will just work. Now to turn the logo on and off, you can simply use the software or the switcher from the same menu we uploaded the picture from. We can simply click it on and there it is. I Google searched for free BMP and that's what came up. So <laughs> that's what we're using. I probably should have found a square one, but anyway, it works. So we can reposition this either in the X axis, so across or Y, up and down. I'll just show you this quickly. So if we want to set it to the other side of the screen, we can simply do that just by moving the X axis in the software here. And then you can hit set again and you can bring it back. The Y axis will control the other axis, which is this, so you can move it around nice and simply. This takes a bit of finessing, so just do this ahead of time. Don't do it in the stream, otherwise you'll be fiddling around with it. If you wanna do the same thing with the actual switcher, I'll show you how to do that right now. We go into SW over here. We go down to logo. And then we get the same options on screen here that we do in the software. This may be a slightly more intuitive because we can just use this button on screen here, the touch screen to move it around. So if you are forced to do this, you know, in the moment, you can do it. It's kind of a bit clunky, but it works. You can simply just, as you can see, I'm doing this in real time so you can see just how it moves. It starts off slow and then it starts moving faster. So just be wary of that. It has like a speed increase the longer you hold down, which makes sense, but it just takes a bit of getting used to. Let's cover the chroma keying aspect of this. So does the L2 Plus support it? Yes, it does, except I don't have this room lit correctly for Chroma King. While I do have a blue backdrop here, it's not lit in the correct way to get the best effect. And as you can see, there's light and stuff bouncing off my laptop here, so it's not looking perfect whatsoever, but it does work and I'll show you how to do this. So in the options on the software, if we go into the effects menu again, we can turn Chroma King on and off by using this slider. 
We can also select a generic color. So we've got orange, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and purple. Blue was the closest to the denim color that I've got behind me, so that's what I went with. And then I just had to move the sliders back and forth until something happened. It's quite fiddly. I didn't just turn it on and it worked. I had to sort of fiddle around, and this is the best I could get it in this room. Again, this backdrop isn't lit correctly for doing this, but I wanted to show you a practical example of how this works. To get back to this view with chroma keying enabled, all I had to do was hit on input source number one, and it looks like as it would normally, but without the red light on. I've had to turn that off for this particular demonstration. Now, if I hit four again, it's going to key out the backdrop and I'm good to go. Now to change which layer you're keying with the controls, either on the switcher itself or on the software, you can tap on the program and preview mode on screen and it will say layer selected B, layer selected A, and this will control which one actually gets keyed out. When I first turned on the L2 Plus, I was quite surprised just how loud the fans were, but this can also be a good thing because it keeps the unit very cool. I've been using this for a few hours as of shooting this video and it's not that hot to the touch, so the fans really work. But just know if you've got a shotgun microphone, facing it or if a shotgun microphone's out of shot pointing towards you, you may hear this. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to adjust the fan speed and I'm also going to bring down the shotgun microphone so you can hear the difference. So to adjust the fan speed, hit the menu button over here, go down to settings, go down to fan speed. Now I'm going to bring the shotgun mic down, fan speed 2. Fan speed one. Fan speed three. So as you can probably hear, fan speed three really ramps up the fan. So if you're in a really hot shooting environment or if you're doing anything outdoors with direct sunlight, keep it on three the entire time. If you're shooting in a studio situation like this, one or two should be fine. Let's talk about the audio options because audio is just as important as video, especially if you're gonna be doing any type of live streaming. This does have its limitations. I'm gonna cover that in this particular section as well as some positives. So if we take a look at the unit, we can hit the menu button over here, go down to audio, click the button, and then we go down to source. So we get four different inputs we can choose from. Source input one, two, three, or four. They're the HDMI inputs. Then if we go the other way, we get line in and we get audio follows video. Now audio follows video means every time you push a button, it's going to switch to the audio source of whatever device that is. That might be practical for some people, but it's not for me. So I like it just to work with one audio source. So that's the positive. You can assign it to just work from the audio of one channel. And being that my camera has an XLR adapter, the GH5S, you're listening to the shotgun microphone the entirety of this video going through input source number one. As it is right now, you can't mix the audio from input source four and input source one, which is a huge bummer. I really felt like this would have been a perfect solution for most people had they have enabled that. Let's take a look at the audio preamp. So on the side of the unit over here, we have a 3.5 millimeter input jack. This can be assigned to either line or microphone level input, which is awesome and I'll set it to line input. I'm going out of that from a Behringer mixer, just a standard analog mixer, and I'm gonna enable this microphone going in. There's also something you need to know, and I'll show you that now. So to get the external microphone to work, hit the menu button over here, go down to audio again, change the source to line in, and then hit the button on top of the unit, and now you should be listening to the Rodecaster Pro. Right under the source type here, we have external audio type. You can change this from either line in to mic in, but I'm gonna leave this as line in. And when you switch over, the audio signal on screen represents that of the microphone or device you've got plugged in, which is great. The only downside to this, as you can probably see, the audio isn't in sync with the video. This would have been a massive upgrade had they have given you an option to offset the audio sync in the unit as opposed to just using it with OBS. Now the good news is the instruction manual actually covers how to do this in open broadcaster software. So if you are streaming with this, it's pretty common that HDMI delay and analog delay are always a little bit different in terms of milliseconds. So you've got to always do that in open broadcaster software, but some switches just work straight out of the box. It's a bit of a downer that they didn't add 
an audio sync delay to this analog source. Maybe in a firmware upgrade they can do this, but as it stands right now, you're still gonna have to use OBS. When it comes to the 3.5 millimeter output, I've tested this with some headphones. There's some good and bad to it. So the good news is if you're producing a video on behalf of someone else as a producer and you're not actually in the video, it's a good enough reference audio to get by. It's not great sounding, but it works. If you're in a video and you wanna wear headphones, for example, the audio is slightly delayed, which really slows down your speech. It's this really weird phenomenon that happens when you hear yourself back with a lag. At least it does for me anyway. Let me know if you've experienced that. So as it stands on its own, it's usable if you're kind of working for someone else. But if you're in a situation where you wanna wear headphones out of this, I would say avoid that at all costs. Let's cover some of the frequently asked questions I know that will come in regarding this particular switcher. So isn't it an upgrade over the L1, the original one? Yes, and that's because of the touchscreen functionality. You get a much bigger preview window. It's a huge upgrade in that regard. Secondly, you might be wondering about onboard recording. This doesn't have it whatsoever. So you can't substitute this USB 3 cable for a USB stick and hit record somewhere in the menu. It just doesn't have that option available. In relation to overheating and heat dissipation, the internal fan does a really great job. I think the last unit just had a heat sink on the bottom of it. So this is a big, big upgrade and being able to control the fan speed is awesome. I've had the fan on two the entire time and these video I think I've been shooting for about two hours so far and this isn't too hot to the touch whatsoever. It's nice and warm, but it's not hot. And if you want to cool it down more, you can simply crank the fans up to three. If you're a gamer, I would probably give this a miss and I'm going to explain why. While it has chroma key support, picture in picture and all of those great video effects, not being able to mix the audio sources together is a huge downer. So you can't bring in the game audio and your voice audio and get a balance to your audience. You can only select one. Unless you're routing all of this externally via a mixer and then into it, you could use it that way, but that would require more gear and more know-how. So as it stands right now as a plug and play device, I don't recommend this for gamers. Let's talk about using this for podcasting because I know a lot of people that watch the channel are right into it. Now, if you plan on using your camera with an XLR adapter like I am with the shotgun microphone, you can absolutely use something like this for doing live to air podcasts or recording. It's going to sound fine. You just can't bring in any other audio sources without an external mixer. So that's where something like the Rodecaster Pro might do the job. If you can feed a Rodecaster Pro into an XLR adapter and then feed it into this and select that audio source, you'll be in luck. You might be asking whether or not you can choose if the multi-view or program goes out over USB-C or via HDMI. The great news is yes, you can do both to either and at the same time, but being that we have a full touchscreen with the multi-view here, you probably won't need that necessarily going out to the computer. But if you're a producer only, that might come in really handy. I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of this unit and my overall user experience. So the thing I love most about it is the screen. Having a 5.5 inch LCD screen like this is killer. I love the fact you can touch on screen to switch views just like that, or you can use the buttons and it also incorporates into some of the other functionality of the unit. I also love the fact you can just hold down on the screen and bring up the program output and see it in full screen. It's just a massive upgrade. There's not another switcher out like it that I've had a chance to test with a screen this nice. If you're someone who's doing solo content creation work and you're gonna be working in a studio and you just wanna switch your own show by using something like this, this will work without any problems at all. Even though it has limited audio functionality, the video side of it is awesome. When it comes to this transition bar, I find it a little bit redundant. I really feel like that space could have been better taken up by adding some extra hardware keys, especially quick keys to get to the picture in picture modes. Which brings me to my point. I really feel like because we get such a big screen, it would have been great having a list of picture in picture buttons on screen. You can't do it that way. You have to go into the menu to get back to those picture in picture modes or you have to do it via the computer software. This is a little bit of an oversight in my opinion, being that we get such a great screen, I would have loved to have not had to do any menu diving to bring up those quick options. One of my biggest criticisms of some switches is they don't have an on and off button. You plug the power in, they turn on instantly. This actually has an on and off button. So this is a good thing. It's a great feature and more switches should incorporate it. Thanks for watching folks. My name's Shane. A massive thank you to FuelWell for sending this out. If I missed anything and you have a particular question, please let me know in the comments section below and I'll check back and answer your question as soon as I can. 
When it comes to the Alpro 2, it's definitely got its strengths as well as a few things on the audio side that kind of let it down a little bit. But as a straight up content creation tool, if you're gonna be using something like open broadcaster software to stream to somewhere like YouTube or Facebook Live or any of those type of things, that's where its strength is. So if you're gonna be in a situation like this with multiple cameras or a computer going in and something else going in, that's where this will work. But just know you are limited by that single audio source. Thanks again for watching. My name's Shane. I'll catch you soon. See ya.